Good morning, and welcome to our weekly coffee break. My name is Andy Terentiev, Senior Account Executive at Long's Building Intelligence Team. And our subject matter today is air purification. What are you using? At Long, we are working with our clients, which includes school districts and higher ed schools, using controls and analytics to meet ASHRAE and CDC air quality guidelines, as well as working with our partners to provide air purification technologies to increase buildings' occupant confidence as they return to their buildings. As you may know, Washington K through 12 and higher ed schools have received 760 million and 40 million respectively from the December 2020 Stimulus Act. And today, the American Rescue Plan, which will be signed by President Biden, will provide Washington State K through 12 schools with $1.6 billion and $655 million for state higher ed schools, including community and technical colleges. I think that's really great. As a matter of fact, Chris Wright Bell, superintendent for up K through 12 schools here in the state, said that the district should treat this as a quote unquote one time money for costs such as upgrades to ventilation systems. That's what we want to see improve air quality, fix your systems. Uh, one of our key purification partners is Washington Air Reps. And today, Jamie Love, yes, Love, and he's going to give us a lot of love will give a high level technical product summary that can help uh, buildings be safer. Uh, take it away, Jamie. All right, uh, I wanna thank everybody for joining us this morning. I hope you have your coffee, I do. Uh, thank you, Andy, for the introduction. Um, I know we've all been somewhat become experts during this pandemic. And I know there's a lot of confusion on A, how do, you, do we get funds? Are we available for funds? Uh, you know, do we need to up data buildings, what is out there, what can we use, what are other people using? Um, it is a mountain of information. And so the purpose or the way I see this going is just me kind of doing a really high overview of a kind of several different products, technologies that are out there that can all help with your building needs. So let's get over here. So ASHRAE recommendations, uh, we all know they, they came out originally and said MERV 13 or better filters. Um, localized supplemental air cleaning systems, which covers a broad scope, uh, proper ventilation rates. So this would be something that um, you could discuss with Long as far as analytics and you know how much outside air you're bringing into building, stuff like that, uh, room building and room pressure, pressurization, excuse me, use of UVC and property humidi humidity levels. So one thing that we've seen people do um, if you can't go to MERV 13, because what we're doing with a MERV 13 filter, if you don't already know, filters are basically holes in paper that act like a sieve. So they're going to catch particulate. So one way, if you can't get to a MERV 13, because as you get smaller holes, you're increasing static pressure. So the trade-off is higher efficiency filters um, and higher static. So less efficient filters, less static pressure. So one way to avoid that, you can talk about polarized media is one way, um, which would be um, putting a charge on the media, replacing your standard uh, paper filters. This helps uh, particles bond to the, to the fibers in the media. It also helps them 360 degree load. So you'll get longer between uh, filter change outs and lower static pressures. So that's one way you can, you can help with filtration. Uh, humidity uh, has been a big one. Um, hospitals are really pushing this right now. There's Dr. Stephanie Taylor from Harvard. She was numerous articles about it, but talking about how the sweet spot for uh, relative humidity is between 40 and 60%. And when we're talking about infection rates um, and pathogen uh, mitigation, it, it's really important to have our RH between 40 and 60. And again, this is something that plays with Long's ability to help manage your building controls and, and analytics. Um, humidity is, it's really interesting because they've, you know, there's, when you get between 40 and 60%, uh, you're going to decrease disease transmission in two ways. So the virus is going to settle. It's not going to stay dry air. Um, it's going to settle, which can then be killed when you do surface cleaning. Um, they call it avoidance when it's suspended in air because cleaning the surface doesn't clean the, the particle floating. Um, and then also humans just 
we we respond better when the relative humidity is between 40 and 60 percent we have cilia and there's proteins our bodies produce so you know the flu season right we call it the flu season it's it's always correlated with drier air right so when we have drier air our bodies aren't able to fight it off as as much so it's helping humans fight the pathogens and also it's, it's kind of making the pathogens hard for them to survive so humidity is a good one uvc obviously um people have come out and talked about uvc they've ashray has recommended it as well traditionally when we've seen you uh uvc it's been for coil cleaning on uh, the wet side of an evap coil like at an air handler um, they do make some upper air room units that you can hang on a wall and they also for air disinfection you would see that on the upstream side of a coil and they'd have to be sized appropriately so we're talking about an energy draw and a replacement cost um, and then obviously maintenance so it's a great product but you know there's there's other things that get factored in but this is certainly one that we've seen people um, go to as well uh, also in-room cleaners uh, have become um, you know a recommendation too depending on what type of buildings that you have where if your hvac can't maybe address the issue uh, they have mobile air cleaners and there's a million of them out there so you got to make sure that we're talking about you know robust systems for your environment um, but typically they'll have a hepa filter on them and you got to be concerned about noise level and and then you know what type of space you're putting them in um, but the big one for all this stuff, I mean, is, you know, outside of, you know, what we would consider passive filtration, you know, or like upgrading of filtration at your, at your systems would be, you know, these UL867, UL2998. So with any um, air cleaning devices, what they're called, right? Uh, big concerns are, do they create ozone? And then beyond that, it's, you know, how much energy are these things drawing? Um, what's that going to do to my energy bill? What's that going to look like? So UL867 was previously used for uh, electric air cleaners and it was 50 parts per billion, but there was a loophole because if you installed any of these products in a duct, the ozone test wasn't required. So in 2019, UL2998 came out, um, certified ozone free technology. So what does that mean? So per ASHRAE 62.1 section 571, all devices requiring power to purify the air, including UV lights, polarized filters, and ionizers, et cetera, required UL2998. So one product that's been really um, popular has been ionization. There's different ways you can get there. Uh, GPS is one that we've seen a lot of. Um, they have inactivation rates uh, with different viruses from E. coli to C. diff, norovirus, MRSA, SARS-CoV-2. So the way ionization works is you're gonna, you know, ion, ions are naturally occurring. You have positive and negative ions all around you. So when you introduce larger density of, of ions, they can help break down surface proteins of pathogens. They can help break down VOCs. They, uh, through agglomeration, they're making particles that float through the air larger. So they can be captured by filters um, because you're making larger particles, kind of like back to that polarized media. They're also using agglomeration in that, in that process. Because you're making things larger, your filters will become more efficient. So there's third-party testing that through agglomeration, through things like needlepoint bipolar ionization, you can make your filters more efficient. Um, why is that important for buildings or classrooms? So depending on what you're doing with your, uh, your air handling systems, we're all walking around with masks right now. And depending on what you have on your face, it could be just a piece of cloth. It could be an N95. I mean, people have different levels of filtration uh, levels on their masks. So if you're making particles larger, you're actually making those masks more efficient as well, which is important, I think, for you know in-room learning. And this is kind of holistically important, I think. And this, this kind of talks about all, um, anything that helps agglomerate particles or anything that helps particles not dry out fast and get small again so like with humidity it helps them stay bigger basically or so they can settle um, agglomeration through polarized media um, at, you know at the return filters you have you know I need a point bipolar ionization which would help things agglomerate so we talked about our bodies being able to fight this stuff off so the larger it is if you look at this uh, screen our bodies can handle it up here. Uh, we have mucus and we have cilia that kind of push everything up where we would cough and sneeze it out. 
Um, the smaller it gets, rule of thumb is the smaller it is, the more dangerous it is because it can get down into our lungs. And so, you know, the virus is significantly, you know, as it stands alone, it's very, very small. Um, you know, in nuclei or you know, mucus or spits, not uh, sneeze, it's going to travel larger. But as it's projected through the air, it's going to it's going to dry out, land on surfaces, and can be resuspended. So it is important that when we make things larger, and uh, our body can handle it better. Yeah. For sure. Quick question, Jamie. Sure. Um, do you know what ha how you know when, when with COVID, once it is uh, under a bunch of ions, right? You know mm -hmm. when you uh, put them in a in a room or in a zone, uh, how much bigger does it get when it a golf you know when it catches those those ions? Well, so there's not really anything that statically you can say it gets x bigger, but what's happening with with ion ions in general so uv would would attack it by attacking surface protein by kind of burning it right burning right. surface protein ions br start breaking down surface proteins as they're getting larger so they're getting larger and they're being disinfected the, the other key point i think i forgot to mention too is you know with uv traditionally it's going to be passive passive so we're talking about like playing offense right or sorry defense uh, filtration at the air handlers is playing defense. You're waiting for the particulate to get to those technologies. Um, things like GPS and needlepoint bipolar ionization that are actively putting ions through your system and into the space where people are breathing and coughing and sneezing, kind of like the source, right? Um, it's actively or playing offense, if you will, in the space that we're trying to treat. And it's helping agglomerate those small particles so they can get captured um, by filtration, and they're also breaking down the surface proteins. So we call it offense. So That's these are some cool. examples of the GPS product of, uh, that they have out there, and there's different places you can put it, duct mount, uh, inside fan housing, and also at the coil like you would UV. So that's a super brief overview. I don't know, we're just having a cup of coffee and talking, but yeah, and if anybody has there. any questions, I should have mentioned this, because you um, just use the chat line. Mm -hmm. um, and how many installations of GPS does GPS have across the country, it's, it's, the world? Yeah, it's got to be over like 300,000 now. I mean, traditionally before the pandemic, that particular product was used as an energy saving device. It's in over a thousand K through 12 schools um, for that exact purpose. And then when the pandemic came around, it, it really took off because it had, you know, properties of, you know, odor, odor, odor reduction, VOC reduction. Uh, pathogen mitigation and all those other things so uh, that's been one that's been really popular uh, because it's it's a low energy draw compared to uv it's there's no maintenance really there um, but all these things together working together including analytics and and how you control your building and the amount of outside air all those things with all these technologies is really important and um, i think the purpose of this is to kind of start the conversation ask what we're doing what you're doing how are we doing this and, and how we help you you know address your building specifically because each one's going to be a little different um any questions before we um sign off anyone use the chat oh there's one in chat hold on maybe you can look at that too jamie oh good are they authorized uh dealers to install ionization um that's a good question i don't know if they're gps authorized but certainly Long is working with Air Reps, um, Air Reps being the manufacturing rep uh, and with Long's, um, you know, has been in business a long time installing controllers and install, now installing ionization um, and, you know, and JASIS, et cetera. So it's all about, you know, yeah, finding, go ahead. Yeah, we're seeing, I mean, as far as an authorized dealer, no, we're, we're the Washington Air Reps is the, the rep for GPS and that's our line of needlepoint bipolar ionization um, and yeah mechanicals controls uh, long has been a great partner in, in installing those products as well perfect great all right appreciate everybody uh, attending and hope you have a good rest of the day